of you who are online streaming with us. Um, today, we're going to focus in on our Lord who is good all the time. He is good all the time. And all the time, he is good. He is good. Let's stand and rejoice in that truth.
Isn't it great that we serve a good God? Amen. Sometimes we need that reminder. Welcome. It is great to see your smiling faces this morning. And I hope that we can all continue to smile for the rest of the day. <laughs> Russ is over there looking at me like, no, no. All right. Do we have any announcements? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I got the mic working and everything. Okay. I want to remind you that on August 7th, Sunday, August 7th, right after our church service, we're having our second potluck dinner or lunch, whatever you want to call it. So get your recipe books out, find grandma's favorite and make it to share. That's one thing we do well, right? We make good food and we like to share it. So this is um, our official welcome to Pastor Becky She'll have been here about a month, so we think she's probably going to stay. So we decided to have dinner with her. Okay, so the potluck dinner on August 7th. Uh, a reminder about the blessing box. This is an ongoing need. Uh, we need pretty much everything that are on the colorful little pieces of paper in the pews and downstairs in the tear-off little uh, pieces of paper. And we're, highlight we're starting to highlight a specific need each month but believe me, we need everything. So for the month of July, it's feminine, uh, feminine products, and uh, we do need those, so please contribute with that as well as the other necessary items. And the third thing is we're collecting school supplies for our annual drive for the Woodridge schools. We had a really, really good uh, response last year, and we hope to even top that this year. And I see there's already some contributions in the boxes downstairs. So we appreciate that, and please continue to fill those boxes. Thank you. To highlight that a little bit, I'm going to point out that we are working on condensing where we put all of the mission items that we are bringing at a time, so that when you're looking for the baskets, you'll be able to find specific ones. So as you come in the doors, the, the main door is back there. Um, on your right-hand side will be boxes for the bins, and it will have the names of what we're collecting and what we're doing. We're hoping to also have a list of what's going to be needed in each of those boxes. But um, So look for that. Huh? It's a work in progress. It is a work in progress. And Russ and Bronwyn have been working very, very hard on this this week, including painting the hallway for us. So um, we appreciate that because I absolutely hate painting. But, um, so keep looking to see what changes are being made down there. We're hoping to make it so that it's easier to find and see. All right. Seeing no other announcements, let us start our worship service with prayer. God of grace and God of glory, come and be known to us in our gathering together. Come and be present in the songs that we sing and in the prayers that we raise from the busyness of life. We come now to find once again that you are always present, that you are always ready to receive us, and that you are always good. As we worship you today, deepen the roots of our commitments so that we might learn your calling that you have for us. God, surround us now with the love and comfort of your Holy Spirit and the direction and the redemption of Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, amongst us now. Amen. All right, it is time for the children's chat. And as the children are coming up, it is my duty and my privilege to remind you that we have baskets that we need to pass down the row. All right. Am I? Who's Pastor Becky? What? Oh, that's me. Some days. Some days that's me. All right. You got to hold on to these for a second, okay? All right. You can't see? I'll let you see. It's okay. It'll be okay. Do you guys remember who we've been talking about the last few weeks? God. Who else? 
Moses. Have you remember? Do you guys remember stories about Moses? Have we been talking about Moses? No. No. You're not alone in that. In that. Do you know what Moses did? What did Moses do? Nobody knows. All right, that's okay. So Moses went and he listened to what God told him to do. Yeah. And then he crossed the Red Sea. Do you remember that story? No, that's okay. How about today's story is that he took and he, God told him to build a church. Do you know what a church looks like? Yeah. This, right? It's like a house that God lives in, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to read you guys a story. You're going to have to listen to it though, okay? It says, God told Moses to build a special tent called a tabernacle or a church. It was a place where God could dwell with the people. And God gave Moses all of the details to make the tabernacle perfect. The people were so happy that God wanted to dwell with them. So they gave all that they had and all that they could do so that they could build this special place. Moses asked the people to use their skills and to help build the church. People who could sew used those skills to make it more beautiful. People who did art could make that happen. All of these things happened for God's house. People who knew how to work with their hands used their skills to cut wood or hammer and measure and carve things. And everyone was very happy to do something for God. And finally the tabernacle was finished. When Moses inspected the work, he knew, saw that the people had done everything exactly as God had commanded them. And they, he blessed them. A cloud covered the tabernacle, and the glory of the Lord filled the house that they had made for God. Was that a good story? Do you guys know what a plan is? No? You don't know what a plan is? If I were trying to build something with these blocks, what would I need to do first? Do I put this one down first? Yeah? Then what? Which one? This one? Where would I put it? On top of it? All right. What happens if I put this one on now? Ooh. What about this? Oh, see? There you go. Do I ha did I have to follow these things the right way so that it would stand up the right way? Yeah. Yeah. God does the same thing for each of us. He gives us steps to follow. And sometimes that we, needs, that we need to bring the bricks to do that. We have all kinds of things that we can offer to God. Do you, yeah. Do you think that maybe you could draw something for the church? To make it look pretty? Yeah. Or could you make a card for somebody that was sick? I'm sick. You're sick? Oh, there you go. Well, I hope that you're not sick today. What else could you do? Can you think of something else you could do to make the church better? Make everything pretty. I like it. No? You guys don't have anything? What? You could hang clothes up if they were pretty clothes. There are so many things that we could do. We need to remember to offer all of the big and small things that God wants us to so that he can be here with us. We have to use our gifts. What other gifts so that, so maybe this week, maybe this week as you guys are building blocks, you can tell the people, the adults in your life, about how Moses built the church. Do you think you could do that? Yes. And how they did their best? I have blocks at home. You have blocks at home that you could do this with? Fantastic. Or maybe, this is one of the things that I would like to do. Maybe you could build an indoor tent with blankets. Yeah. yeah. And take yeah. your Bible in there with you and have somebody read it to you. You think you could do that? Yeah. Yeah. Eric has a thing to put down. Mm-hmm. What you got? Well, so that's something that we'd have to figure out in the plan, right? Yeah. Maybe you could take this tape measure 
and measure different things in, the, in your house to see what needs to fit. Just like the people in the story did. Do you think you guys could do that this week? Yeah. All right. Can we pray together before you guys go to Sunday school and child care? Yeah. All right. Can you repeat after me? No. no. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who gives us things to do. Please help us to keep practicing our talking and listening to you. Thank you. Amen. All right. So, can you, there's some papers to do, and there's a, me, a ruler to. It's all right. You can take the blocks with you. Miss Nora will be a, would love that help. All right. How about that? There you go. Thank you very much. We love to measure. Fantastic. Um, so I just want to be intentional about the flow of worship for you so that you understand. Um, I've said this a few times now, but um, I'll probably do this a few more weeks. We open up um, with a welcoming worship. It's one that um, draws our attention to who we are here to worship. Um, that's, that's our intent. Um, and then you get a taste of the sermon with the kids' chat. You get a little hint as to what, what's coming, um, which I think is great because sometimes it's nice to hear that. And then you hear the adult sermon, and you can put them together. Um, but I've always approached this time of worship, which we're going to move back into worship again. We've got a couple of songs that um, invite us into a place where we open our hearts and open our minds and open our ears, um, and many of you are already there. But if you're not, then, then know that as we move through this time of worship, it's, it's more thoughtful. It's a little more um, who God is to us. Um, we're going to start by singing enough because he is more than enough for all of the needs that we have and move into an invitation um, and not a literal invitation. Um, I've read about, oh, come to the altar, and it says that um, so many times it's an invitation to communion or it's an invitation for an altar call. Um, I think it's still an invitation for an altar call. It's an invitation for an altar call to our hearts. So um, I would just ask that you move into a, a place of um, inviting the Spirit in, inviting um, the Lord into your heart and, and open your ears as we move through this time of worship. Why don't we stand?
than we could ever need. that you invite us into this place. You provide more than we even know what to ask for. Sometimes we are in a place of deep hurt that we think we can't come back from, and yet you've provided that forgiveness and that grace. Are you hurting and broken? Then, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, 
can be seated. What an offering that song is. Oh God, we ask that you bless these offerings that have been given. We offer our presence and our prayers, our service, and all that you've given us. We ask now, Lord, that you take it, that you multiply it, and that you use us and it to build your kingdom, to show the world your love, and to speak truth when it is needed. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <clears throat> we come now to our time of our prayers. Prayers for the people that we know, prayers that are of the things that are going on in our lives. We live in a fallen world that is full of hurt. We live in a world where there is pain. We live in a world where there is, po where there is illness, where there is anger, where there is death. We lay all of that at this altar when we come here on a Sunday morning. But not only that, we lay the smiles, the good days, the times with family and friends, the time of worship also. So let us be in an attitude of worship as we center our hearts and we allow them to cry out to God with all that is going on in our world. God, we come here today in fellowship with one another, setting aside this time solely for you. Time to offer you praise and worship, to hear you speak to us, and to leave here shaped a little bit more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. So we come humbly and quietly before you now, praying. Oh God, we thank you for those times this week when we smiled and when we laughed. When we had those times of friendship, of meals shared. Those times when we were able to see your beauty in nature. Maybe those few moments when we felt at peace in our hearts. When we paused to be grateful for the life that you've given us. God, for all of these and so much more, we know that we are blessed. And we thank you. We thank you because we know, God, that there are days when there is difficulty, when there is struggle, when there is anger, when there is hurt, when there are times when we have been less than our best. And God, we give you thanks that you do not turn away from us that we are never alone and that you carry us, that you hold us, that you surround us. Our scriptures tell us that when we confess our sin, you are gracious and just to forgive us. You help us to start anew. And so, Lord, we ask that you hear the cries of our hearts to you now. God, we lift to you our church. It is our desire to be a strong and vital church in our community. We want to be used by you to make a difference in the lives of others. 
We look around and the need for hope and acceptance and love and compassion is so great. And we know that you are the answer to those things. God, we ask that you help us to show others the way to you. Through our programs and our ministries, but most of all, through our lives and our example. The way we love you and our neighbor. God, we pray for those who are sick. For those that are suffering. For those that are lonely. For those that are mourning. For all of us that are in need of your presence. We ask that you reach down and touch with your guidance, with your peace. You have those that are on our prayer list, but you now hear the cries of what is going on with us. The things that we have not yet shared with others. And God, we know in confidence and joy and hope that we have in you. Because we walk daily with you that we can give you thanks and praise knowing that you have already walked before us. And so we take this time to come to you saying the words that Jesus Christ taught us to say. Our Father... Our scripture today comes from Exodus. Surprise. Don't worry, it's only one more week. And then we move to something else. But it's Exodus 20, 30, oh no, Exodus 35, 20 through 35. And it goes like this. Then all the congregation of the Israelites withdrew from the presence of Moses. And they came, everyone whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing, and brought the Lord's offering to be used for the tent of meeting and for all its service and for the sacred vestments. So they came, both men and women, all who were of a willing heart, brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and pennants, all sorts of gold objects, everyone bringing an offering of gold to the Lord. And everyone who possessed blue or purple or crimson yarn or fine linen or goat's hair or tanned rams, skin or fine leather, brought them. Everyone who could make an offering of silver or bronze brought it as the Lord's offering, and everyone who possessed wood of any use in the work brought it. All the skillful women spun with their hands and brought what they had spun in blue and purple and crimson yarns and fine linen. All the women whose hearts moved them to use their skill spun the goat's hair, and the leaders brought onk stones and gems to be set in the ephod and the breastplate, and spices and oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women whose hearts made them willing to bring anything for the work that the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a freewill offering to the Lord. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has called by name Bezal, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with divine spirit, with skill, intelligence, and knowledge in every kind of craft, to devise artistic, artistic design, to work in gold, silver, and bronze in cunning stones for setting and in carving wood, in every kind of craft. And he has inspired him to teach both him and Holabab, son of Ashamash, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every kind of work done by an artisan or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns and in fine linen or by a weaver, by any sort of artisan or skilled designer. The word of God for the people of God. Now, let's be honest. Sorry. I got excited there. Let's be honest. How many of us have read that chapter before and are really super excited about it? All right. How many of us have read that chapter before and kind of skipped over it and said, eh, really, God, you had to put that in the Bible? Did we need to know that? Did we need to hear it? I'm going to challenge you today that maybe we do. I know that I did because sometimes I sit up here 
in front of all of you, and I look at God, and I think to God, what am I doing here? I have no gifts, no graces. I have nothing to bring to the table. And God says, that's okay, you don't have to. I already brought it all for you. Together, you and I have heard the call for us to bring our authentic selves to God. We did that the first week I was here. That wasn't my plan. That was God's plan. Together, we've heard the invitation to come and be part of God's work in the world. Together, we've planned and imagined what our time together and in this community will look like, only to be reminded that our plans and our desires might not be the same things as God's. Together, we have witnessed miracles as we heard about the Israelites who traveled through the Red Sea, and together we were able to participate in a miracle, in the baptism of a child, and as we partake, took communion together, the everyday miracles that we often take for granted. And together, today, we have listened to the word of God, the scripture in Exodus, the one that many times we skip over or don't focus on. And the challenge is to remember that this isn't about what all they brought. That this, all of this, is God's story. It's about what God brings to the table. About how he calls and he equips and he sends each one of us, whether it's up here or whether it's where you are in your pew or whether it's while we're at the giant eagle down the street. It's about how he calls and he equips and he sends us and about how he provides for us everything that we need. God gives us what we need. Now, I could have chosen really any scripture to prove that, but the, is, the story of the Israelites, this story of our past, holds power that we often overlook. It reminds us of what God has done and can do and how God can use us if we're just willing to get out of our own way. Remember with me what has come before this scripture. We could start all the way back with the ancient Hebrews who left Israel during a famine and went to Egypt. Most of us know the stories of Joseph and how he became an advisor to the Pharaoh. But then a new Pharaoh came to power. One who didn't know Joseph or his descendants and the Egyptians feared and took over the Hebrew people. The people cried out to God and God sent Moses. With fear and some courage, the people fled with Moses across the sea with the Egyptians hard on their heels. But God gave them everything that they needed. He provided the safety that they needed. He led them into the wilderness. And when they were hungry and they were thirsty and they were whining, because none of us would ever do such a thing, he gave them food and water. And when they were afraid of getting lost, which again, none of us would ever have or do, God provided a pillar of cloud by day and a fire by night to guide them. God gave them ten commandments to live by. And then he forgave them. He forgave them when they made their own God to worship in the form of a calf. And then he provided a way for them to respond to all that he had done. The God that we serve is a God that gives us all that we need, whether we deserve it or not. And this is where our, we meet our scripture today, to one of the many repetitions of God's plan that is in this, this book. And the plan all along is so that he can reside with his people, so that he can be present where they are, which is really what they have needed the most this whole time. He does the same thing for us, right? He provides a way so that he can reside in us, which is really what we've needed this whole time. 
God gives us what we need. He provides a way for the Israelites to be able to focus on worship. Do you know how hard that is to do in today's society? God provides a way for them to be able to focus on him and all that God has in store for them. God gives them a way to respond, knowing that they need to bring what they can to the table. Knowing that this is an important and needed way for them to build the community that God has wanted all along. Everyone whose heart has stirred in him and whose heart moved them to bring anything for the work brought what God had given to them, shared it with each other, and back with God. They brought gold and silver and bronze and yarns of blue and purple and crimson and fine linen and precious stones and fragrant spices and oil for the light. You might be sitting there wondering why I am even focused on this, but I think that as I've gotten to know you over the last few weeks, as I continue to hear your stories, this is why we're hearing the scripture this morning. Because this church, the people of God that reside right here in this community, have come to work together out of the overflow of your hearts. You're here because you love God and you love each other. You come bringing your gifts. You know that there are going to be moments when we have to cross boundaries, do hard things, deal with hard things, try different things. But you come anyways, offering what you have so that we can come together to make God's call for and his instructions a reality. So that we can do the work of building God's kingdom here, in our neighborhood, in the community that surrounds us. And I think that's why we're brought to this scripture today, because the power of this scripture is that no one individual could have contributed all that was needed. Any more than in this church, any one individual could, could or can contribute all that is needed. This worship team is amazing, but they all contribute together. Our children's ministry team is amazing. They all contribute together. Our church can be, is, and is, and can continue to be amazing when we contribute all together. We've been an, given an opportunity to see what God has given to us, and it's okay to stand here and say, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I have anything to bring. I don't know what God can use me for. But we have all been given this opportunity to see what he's given to us and what God can do with it if we bring it and we offer it to him. God gives us everything that we need. He gives us abilities and he calls us to a task. And as we read our scripture this morning, God gives us reminders because some of us need a lot of reminders. He gives us the reminder of this story where we see the Israelites step out of their fear, out of the unknown, and remember all of the goodness that God has shown throughout that journey. And he lets us see what their response is as they bring their offerings, their gifts, and their abilities to Moses. What I didn't read is that they brought so much so that Moses had to tell them to stop. Did you hear that? In the last part of the story, they keep bringing what God has given them until someone, I think it was probably the trustees, <laughs> told Moses that they had to stop. Can you imagine that? It's a beautiful picture of what happens when the people of God lean into the knowledge that God gives us everything that we need. God provides what is needed, the plan, the way of doing it, the people, and the future. What would it look like 
church, if so many people had gifts of music and offered them that Bronwyn had to tell us all to stop. Don't worry, she doesn't have to worry about that with me. Or what if we had so many people whose hearts had been stirred with the love of kids that Nora had too many Sunday school teachers? And she had to say, wait, hold on. That would be an awesome pro- problem, wouldn't it? Or what if you fill in the blank? Have our hearts been stirred by God to lean into that knowledge that God gives us everything that we need? We just have to be willing to offer it to him? To know that we all have something to give, even if we don't know what that giving is? That we all have plans to be part of, even when we don't know what those plans are yet? That God is using us to create and sustain an authentic faith community, one that listens to his plans, who brings what we have, who's willing to expect miracles, and who's willing to sit on a couch together or in a pew together or at a table together and to talk about the God who provides everything that we need, the God who stirs our hearts, and the God who creates in us a new one. Friends, as the worship team heads back up front, I challenge you to think of ways that we can respond to the 10,000 ways that God has provided for us, the 10,000 things that God has given to us, beginning with how he provides ways to serve him. Not every one of us can do everything, obviously, if you ever hear me sing, but there are a multitude of gifts And not one of us has all of them. But we all have our part to play in building the kingdom of God. In building the community of believers that God can use. Come and let's give him all that we are, all that we have, and allow him to use us mightily for the building of his kingdom. Let's get to work. The title of Psalm um, 103 you know, David always described um, his psalms, and it is thanksgiving for God's goodness. And you already have a, an idea of what we're singing, um, but the first verse is, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And that is exactly what that means, to give God thanksgiving and to praise him and to worship him with our everything. Would you stand and join us, please?
Turn to your daily lives, know that your pursuit of peace reveals the world.